On the island of Newfoundland Upon the Selwyn's coast Lies the little town of Virgil To whom all things is told There are so many islands That lie just off her shores And when the cold north wind blows You can hear the billows roar The people from the village Make their living from the sea They like their independence it shows that they are free Some fish in their small boats In the wind, the rain and sleet While others make their living on the offshore Call their fleet They've known their sheer of tragedy Down And when the memories overcome, they show their grief with tears. For they have lost some loved ones to the furies of the sea. For heartaches and heartbreaks are locked in. Got beauty carved on its rugged shore. Seven miles of pure white sand. Who could ask for more? The mountains and the valleys where the rivers run so fast, and the salmon rise to the sportsman's fly as he makes. Another cast. Tell the people of this village, love their native home. For anyone who goes away, oh, surely will return. Just like that life. Rugged bellies burn so deeply in your soul. What makes this rugged bellies burn so deeply in your soul? Good evening and welcome to This Week in Review. Tonight in our stories we have National Charles Day, Breakfast with Santa, Mitten Tree, Virgil Arbor Authority Update. Please stay tuned for these stories after this. For this week only, TV Bingo will be held on Thursday at 6.30 p.m. Try your luck and play TV Bingo, sponsored by the 50 Plus Seniors Club. Cards are 6 for $5 and can be bought from any member of the Senior Club or in most stores around town. Last Thursday was National Charles Day. They celebrated by having a free skate at the arena. It was also the first week the arena was open using the new system. About 50 children had took part in the free skate. Snacks were also served. Daniel Domney was the lucky winner of the Scrabble game.
last week was Gord Ingram's last week as manager of Foodland. For his last act as manager, Gord gave a donation to the fire department for their breakfast with Santa. Okay, uh, Maxine, I uh, appreciate you coming by. Uh, I thought it would be a nice, uh, nice gesture up on uh, us leaving that uh, we supported the uh, uh, Virgil Fire Department over the last number of years. I'm not quite sure how many years it was, but probably 10, 12 years anyway that we sponsored the uh, breakfast for Santa with them. So uh, we're going to uh, present them with their uh, monies for breakfast for Santa for uh, again this year. And uh, I'm sure it's always will continue on. Uh, I can't say I'm sure. I'm open. Yeah, they'll yeah. continue on with that practice for Santa. They think that's a good gesture on the food map pack over the years, and uh, we're just glad to be a part of it over the years. And thanks very much, uh, fire department members, for your, your support and, and, and over the years. And again, at least practice for Santa. Okay, well, and on the Apple Fire Department board, and you and uh, you and Sheila, I'd like to uh, thank you for your hospitality, and hopefully we'll continue this service. The Anglican Church's annual mitten tree was finished last Sunday. This year there were 333 items collected. This was down a bit from last year with 382 items collected. This year the items are staying in Newfoundland. June Iscock, chairperson for the Virgil Arbor Authority, came by the studio and talked a bit about the organization. Good evening. In our studios tonight, I have June Iscock, who is the chairperson for the Virgil Arbor Authority. Good evening, June. Hi there, Maxine. Um, you guys got a annual general meeting coming up soon? Yes, and that's partly why I wanted to drop in and uh, see you and, and let the viewers know there's an annual general meeting happening at the Ground Search and Rescue Building on Wednesday night, that's next Wednesday, which is the 9th of December um, at 7 p.m. Okay. So uh, how long have the Arbor Authority been in uh, Virgil, June? Well, Maxine, I've just been going over some of the minutes, actually, that people have taken. So in 2002, uh, uh, Harbor Authority was formed here. Um, many of the board members are still around. Um, I do believe it was a few years after that that actually the Marine Service Center also became a part of the Harbor Authority. And so um, when we think about the Marine Service Center and the uh, travel lift and all that goes with the Harbor Authority now, that's been happening since 2005. Okay. Yep. So what kind of uh, projects or things that the Virgil Arbor Authority been involved in? Well, um, Maxine, a couple of years ago, I happened to hook up with this group uh, because of a job creation project that was supported by the board of directors. I was actually just going to go in there and use an office and um, eventually uh, became a part of the board and uh, am now the chairperson. I ended up with that chairperson title because the person who was the chair was stepping down and it's just an automatic that the, the vice chair goes up to the chair person you know um, some of the things that we've been trying to take on over the past couple of years is to get our financial house in order and to try to find a way where the Harbor Authority of Burgio could actually be generating enough money to actually employ a person to manage the the facility that we have there okay uh, some of the projects this year in particular, uh, you might have noticed and maybe the BBS has been down to have a look, but we have a floating dock. This floating dock was in the works for a long time. Um, uh, it's been affectionately nicknamed Kitchener Skinner's floating dock. You know, unfortunately, Kitchener passed away, uh, but he was uh, very active in trying to pursue floating docks and different kinds of mm. things for the Harbor Authority. And uh, so that project eventually went through. It took a very long time, but that is something that he started back when his time, uh, in, in the time that he was with the Harbor Authority. And finally, in April of this year, we actually have a floating dock. It was a $60,000 contract 
through small craft harbors and um, it, we've had a very positive response to that floating dock and of course a lot of the fishermen are saying when can we get some more so we have actually suggested to small craft harbors that if we, there is any money in the future floating docks um, are, are things that we need. I think a lot of people these days anyway even though well in Burjo I do notice there's lots of new stages and storehouses and wharves being built but uh, there are a lot of people that would prefer to have a facility like we have down at the Marine Service Center and the Furby's Arbor Slipway so that they've got a place to store their boats and stuff. Um, another uh, project that we took on, uh, or, or well, that we taught, we tried to get money for, was the paving of the parking lot. Mm -hmm. We had really hoped that this paving would have been done by now. Of course, um, marine contractors got the contract to do the work. Unfortunately, it was so late the the tender was called, and then there was a postponement. The deadline there was an extension on the deadline or something. So by the time they got down here to do quite a bit of work, um, the asphalt plants are closed, so we couldn't get that part of it done. Now I was speaking to the person from the federal government because it was a public works contract, even though it was kind of like it's goes through the Harbor Authority of Burjo, it's still public works infrastructure money. And um, I did say to them, when might we expect our pavement? They told me, uh, spring. And so I said, oh, spring. I said, well, spring, March, April, you know. They said, no, really, spring will be more like after May 24th weekend. So I said, oh, you mean summer. So I mean, we don't really know. We, we, we hope for, I suppose, an early spring, and mm -hmm. uh, hopefully those asphalt plants will get going, and we will be able to get that paved before say the season of May, June and all of that summer season but who knows sometimes um, sometimes these things can go slower than what we anticipate and so that that's a contract that's in the works which is a good thing it's moving forward anyway. Um, the other project that we have right now we've just uh, put on the BBS that we're looking for two employees so we it's not like a job creation project, but of course we are happy to say that we are creating two jobs for people in our town. And uh, we're going to be doing some improvements to our building down there. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a $30,000 contract awarded by Small Craft Harbors. And uh, we're going to, uh, we are going to do some upgrades to the washroom and the laundry facilities that people would use. We're going to have an office downstairs rather than upstairs. Uh, we're just going to hopefully make it a, a better, more serviceable center. Of course, Small Craft Harbors encouraged communities to become harbor, have a harbor authority in place, mainly to service the fishing industry. Um, but of course, a lot of our revenue does come from the recreational boating sector as well because, you know, we store a lot of boats. Um, and this, the storage of the boats on the Furby's Arbor Slipway and down on the Marine Service Center parking lot is a way for us to generate revenue. Those fees that are paid by fishermen or recreational boaters along with the offloading fees and the berthage rates is really the only thing that supports our Harbor Authority office um, other than the, a project like we would get now, this $30,000 contract through Small Craft Harbors to do these improvements will give us a small amount of administration money that will help us with our overhead as well. But um, Maxine, what I, what I wanted to put out there to people who are out there watching tonight is like, uh, we're really interested in people coming forward to help us out at the Harbor Authority of Burjo. You know, uh, I kind of fell into it, you know, um, but I do believe that it's got a lot of potential down there. Um, I think it's a very vital service for our community, you know, living right on the ocean, the fishing industry and all that, but it's really, really hard working with a group of volunteers 
and there not being a main person who's actually a manager of the place. And the more I learn about the Harbor Authority, and I have actually taken advantage of a conference that they've put off for the three years that I have been a part of the Harbor Authority, I've gone to the conference. And I, sometimes I ask myself, why am I taking on this responsibility, you know, and, I'm, and that's why I'm, I'm putting out a plea there for people who might be able to come to a monthly meeting, it's only a couple of hours a month, because I need people's help to, to provide me with the information that I don't have, because I'm not experienced in the fishing industry, you know, I come from the more of the administration side of things, um, along with the projects that we do at the Harbor Authority. We also hire students, so when that time comes, I fill out the application forms and do the interviews and try to put students in place to help us out. But students coming on board and learning what the Harbor Authority is all about, certainly they cannot manage. And one of the things that the board, the, bo the current board of directors and myself realize is it's too big of an operation to be run by volunteers completely. Um, and so with these improvements, with a new board in place. Now, mem, you know, I say new board, when I look back at the minutes 2002, there's still members of the board with us today that were there, and thank you to those people for wanting to stay there on the board. But uh, we are hoping that next week a few new people might show up as well mm -hmm. and to help us with a three to five year strategic plan. Um, you know, there is a lot of potential, but without there being the support from the community mm -hmm. and without there being a, a way to generate the money necessary to pay a manager, I'm really not sure how long the Harbor Authority will survive you know, without that. So, of course, I, am, I don't want to be negative in any way, really trying to be positive, and the fact that Small Craft Harbors has supported us on all of these projects that we've talked about leads me and the Board of Directors to believe that, you know, they also believe that we have potential here for improvements all the time. More floating docks, possibly a bigger well capacity so that we can accommodate bigger boats, you know, a lot of different things, improving our inventory, you know, when um, oftentimes uh, people have to travel a far distance to get the supplies that they need for their boats because they're not available through us or through our local stores. And uh, and so, yeah, we're, uh, we're uh, putting out an appeal, asking people to please at least come to the meeting where we will just be doing an, an overview similar to what I've just done with you here today, just chat to you about what's been mm -hmm. going on and, uh, and, and try to get some people involved so that we make sure that the Harbor Authority of Burjo is a strong entity and continues to service the, uh, the, the fishing industry and also the recreational boat sector because I mean we we can't forget them you know I mean we got a big waterway system around here and uh, and um, yeah it's all important. Okay. Speaking of the waterway system do you want to, I noticed a couple of times you've had messages on there BBS 10 about the, the speeding up in the slow areas. Yes. Um, what kind of trouble is that bringing you guys like is is a, a everlasting issue or? Well, you know, it's interesting that I was reading in the minutes uh, from 2002, 2003, 2004, there were some similar problems uh, with, you know, people racing around in their boats. Uh, uh, I, we put signs up, you see, in certain areas, and I think it's like where there's a lot of boats parked at their wharves mm -hmm. and there is a slow, no wake zone. Now, I've actually attended, the theme this year was safety and a couple of years ago there was lots of boating safety in the conference as well you know um I respect that sometimes these people who are driving their boats uh, want to get home. You know, they've had a long day and they've offloaded their fish and they're hungry and tired and that kind of a thing. You know, I think that people do need to stop and think about the safety issues. You know, uh, somebody might be 
climbing down aboard their boat trying to get out of their boat just as that person speeds by, mm. creates the wake. I mean, so okay, today it might be just somebody who squat their finger mm. because their hand was, you know, they were getting down. But you know, there's been examples of people being up, up on the rigging on their boats and somebody speed by and the person actually fell off of the rigging. They're like, there's major safety concerns. A lot of these boats also cost m lots of money. And so then uh, you don't, if you've got your boat docked on your wharf and I'm speeding by and, and your boat is banging up against the wharf and banging up against the wharf and I'm creating damage to your boat, well, that's not very neighborly. Do you know what I mean? And so um, when we put out the notices, it's like um, I, I, I question some of these people over and over again. It's like... Uh, one person sees a bunch of other people doing it, so they say, oh, well, I'm going to do it too. Mm -hmm. When really, if somebody is, is seeing something like this happen, it's really, it's like, it's not like myself, the chair, can do anything about it, but we hope that the messages would work because we don't have to want to go to the RCMP. We don't want to have to have the boat owner contact the RCMP to rat on so-and-so because they're the ones. And usually, you know, there's three or four people who just disregard the safety aspect of it. I mean, there may be a lot more to it, but from my perspective, the safety element is enough to have those slow, no-wake zone signs and since we put on the third notice my understanding is that um, people are now slowing down in the places where they're supposed to. Do you know Maxine uh, goes back to uh, like just being neighborly and thinking about those safety elements and thinking of your neighbor. You wouldn't want it done to you. You don't want your boat beat up, so why are you going to try to do some damage to somebody else's, you know? There are issues that come up every now and then. Hopefully, it's not going to be a problem too much in the future. Okay, very good. Well, thank you so much. June, is there anything else you would like to add? Uh, no, Maxine, I just can't stress enough the importance uh, of the Harbor Authority to the town of Burjo, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, and so that's why, like I say, I just wanted to come in and have a chat with you, let you know about the AGM. I certainly, uh, after the fact, I guess, you know, we uh, will let you know uh, if there's anything that needs to be discussed with you, let you know any news out of our meeting. But uh, we hope that a few people will come out and just be interested to help us go forward. That's all it is. Okay. Well, thank you so much for dropping by. And thank you, Maxine, for the opportunity. This concludes our program for tonight. Thank you for watching.